Spin. Going to check into their analyst desk. Thank you, gentlemen. And I see you, Jat. We will discuss that play in full detail. We might even take 30 minutes to discuss it, Ultra if that's what he really motion. wants, right? Nerf mode. Play the whole thing at like a quarter speed, an eighth speed maybe. I don't know. Every ability stick, covered. Yeah, yeah. Stick, <laughs> stick around to find out. But I, I do want to start at the beginning of the game because we, we saw a very slow early game and an interesting lane swap or swap yeah. back from Dignitas. So usually when you see a lane swap, you want to either defend the tower that is going to be pushed or go and just push your own tower and trade one for one. So a good strength of Tristana in all phases of the game is that now she's kind of a demolitions expert and can take towers super fast with her E, her explosive shot. And they didn't do that. They chunked top tower by a lot and they realized that Tip was trying to go for a hold. They contested the blue buff and then they just backed off. And for some reason after that, their whole lane swap idea just collapsed and they kept Tristan on the top side. Her summoners were burned and they never took the tower and, and then Gamsu TP to the bot lane and got zoned off a bunch of CS. He was unable to last hit. He was last hitting pretty poorly as well. But you're not using your Tristan to its advantage. You can push towers very fast. And then they swap the lanes back into a 2v2 scenario where you cannot aggress because they have the Shen ultimate. So it was just all over the place and they were, were losing lanes pretty hard. But uh, Tip didn't capitalize on it. Yeah. That's what I was gonna say. We noticed that Rush didn't have a ton of presence in the early game on that Elise. So playing that slow game seemed to be working in Dig's favor. I, I do wanna touch on the Tristana for just a second because that was a lane swap that was initiated by the Tristana, by Dignitas. They didn't get the turret, and on top of it, they didn't even use the Tristana correctly later on. I would have liked to see a different pick because it's a very team fight oriented composition, yeah. and they didn't even need a Tristana because she didn't even give them that early gold advantage that you get from a turret. That's the big bonus. It should be a passive on Tristana that you get a turret at the start of the game a little bit faster than the enemy, but they weren't even able to capitalize on that, so I think that Tristana pick was just completely Worthless at that Worthless. point. Yeah, well, let's uh, let's jump ahead. We have a couple replays we're going to go over, so I want to get into the first one. 31 minutes into the game, it's an ace and a baron for Dignitas off the back end of that. We're going to pull that up just now. Uh, Crumbs, I'm going to let you walk us through this one. So this fight showcases tips composition. They need to be grouped at all times, and they are not. Like, Cocoon is already used, and the Janna and Elise are completely by herself. This is all free damage done from Dig. And as Azir tries to go on the Tristana, who looks like it's going crazy and jumping in, turns out there's an Echo Stun right there. So it's a great a little acting from JJ over here. And then, like, you just cannot fight as you're split. Eventually, the fight that Tip wins is actually when they're all clumped up. But this one really reminds them that, look, we have to stick to the game plan, otherwise we're just gonna get aced and lose. And right. th that was Dignitas actually picking a good fight, because they saw them out of position, Kiwi yeah. Kid kept the back line in order, and what ended up happening there was this was right as they got their Zeke's Harbinger on Kiwi Kid. And a, a big part of this is, Zeke's Harbinger, the counter to it, is kill the support. If you kill the support, <laughs> that item is no yeah. longer affecting the AD carry. And what happened was, Core JJ actually, his turned online, and he turned and he killed Gate in three hits. Yeah, we, I have to jump in here yeah. real quick. We actually had a, uh, an LCS Big Play tweet for that replay right there. At Kita Silva wrote for that play, amazing fight and comeback out of Team Dignitas. Way to go, Kiwi Kid. Again, this is, this is kind of the glimpse of the Dignitas that can win the series. Yeah. When they play like this, decisive calls, punishing mistakes. You're mentioning that, you know, Tip's composition is not effective when split up. Dig recognizing that and attacking that weakness. I think in that fight, the big hero happened to be Helios and not so much Kiwi Kid because Echo's mechanic, the way he works, when he throws out the stun, the parallel conversions, if he's in sight, you will hear it. He will say like some, whatever sound that he says, he makes it and you hear him, you see him do it and then everybody, okay, just back off. But he was hidden in the Raptor Rush. Throws it away. Gate doesn't know that there's a stun coming out, walks right into it, and in the fight that they end up losing, the stun only hits the Shen where it could have hit the back lane. Now I want to move us ahead to our next replay. 39 minutes in, this is what you were talking about, Crumbs, what happens when the team is together. We're going to pull this one up on your screen, and Zyrene, I'm going to let you walk us through it. I think the stun actually hits Gate a little bit on the side too, but what happens is he's got this set up, he's already got soldiers out, and he's just poking, whittling them down, and then they blow a lot. Adrian flashes away so the Zeke stays online, and then they stun Apollo against the wall, but they don't focus him, they focus Rush. And now they're all in the choke point, and this is properly set up by Azir. Boom, throws everybody into where his soldiers are, and he just destroys them. And meanwhile, 
off screen, Apollo, he has his Zeeks online. He's just throwing so much damage into them. And the fact that, like Jat was talking about where they use their stuns, Nar hits two people. They focus all their damage on Rush while Apollo is stunned right there. And then they aren't able to follow up afterwards. They blew all their damage on some mildly tanky members. I mean, that's exactly how you want that composition to work. Ideally, you want to be sieging. So it's just in a straight line, you know, tanks in front, at least in the, like, the middle. And then you have Janna Cognizier way far back. So in that choke, when it came into the brush, reminiscent of being in the lane. You got the tanks in the front soaking up as much damage as possible with the very long range Kog'Maw and Azir just dishing out damage untouched, protected by the terrain. Yeah, you have to have a formation for this team composition because yeah. it involves disengage and sieging. And we saw it locked in. We we're like, Azir and Kog'Ma, sole damage dealers of this comp. Yeah. They're just trying to keep them alive with the Janna. And they did exactly that in that fight. And we got to see a fight that Dignitas played correctly and one that TIP played correctly. Yeah. And that last fight, Dignitas was picking that fight. This is the whole story of picking the fights even when you don't have to. And that's the big weakness that Dignitas has been running into is they fight because they think they can win under any circumstances, but they can't. That's the reality of the game. I think if anything, that game proves that this can be a very close series. That's just game one. We have the possibility of four more to come. We're going to take a quick break while the teams reset for game two in this quarterfinal series between Team Dignitas and Impulse. Don't go anywhere. And you should be nothing but happy today. Remember that three months ago we were playing relegation game, and now we are playing for a spot in New York. Fight has begun all the same. Rush in the front line. Apollo zoned out. Uh, an ulti only knocks really Adrian in, and the fight continues as Rush picks up a kill. <laughs> He catches Rush, and Rush goes down, a rampage for Core JJ, and the fight continues, a kill back for Gate, Impact trying to run, Adrian's doing some damage, he's doing what he can with auto attacks, here comes the echo, the attack went in from Shen, shift in, it should be enough, there's the game, Team Impulse take game one.